Hey there, this is Dana Arcuri, author, speaker, and wellness advocate. And today the topic is prednisone poison. That's right, you heard correct. I'm calling it poison. We may as well just get right to the point. No hiding around the truth that while there are so many pros and cons to prednisone and also various forms of steroid injections and epidural injections, we need to understand they come with a cost, our health, our mind, and our bodies, and our future. So let's talk about prednisone. I'm no stranger to that drug. You know, when you have 30 plus years of herniated discs, back problems, advanced degenerative disc disease, 10 plus years of fibromyalgia, you know, obviously I have been down the traditional medicine pathway and have tried various medications and anti-inflammatories and so forth to try to decrease the pain and the inflammation. Unfortunately, I've learned a lot in my journey to wellness and the biggest lesson learned is dump prednisone it's going to damage your gut it's going to damage your body and your mind but let's get to some information that's more factual that is very um, educational and informative so you might know prednisone is another name um, it's common you know prednisone is very common but it could be called delta zone rayos Steropred DS, Steropred. These are classified as glucocorticoids. Very tricky name, glucocorticoids. Anyways, a lot of people know about cortisone and about different, different steroid injections. People get them in their knees and their back and various parts of their body where there is pain, possible injuries, inflammation and so forth and my story really begins back in 1988 when I was headed to take my license for beauty school we had to do our our haircut and all these different um, practices to pass or fail for this uh, state board cosmetology license and my back went out. There was no rhyme, there was no reason, there was no accident. I mean, I don't have an explanation, but oh boy, I landed in the ER and of course they gave me prednisone and anti-inflammatories and you name it. I, I was handed a bundle of scripts and even with that, I was limping, I couldn't walk straight, I had a Heck of a time trying to take my state board of cosmetology, but thank goodness I passed. And I'm um, still current today. I'm not a practicing beauty expert. No longer I left the field over 10 years ago when the fibromyalgia really changed my life um, and things kind of went downhill. So, but the whole beginning of my back journey and prendazone journey began way back when in 1988. Um, things kind of got moving and grooving in the year of 2006 when I couldn't walk. My back hurt. I ended up getting multiple testing and they said, you know, there's just continual advanced damage to your back. It's just one year after another year would just lead to more injuries. There wasn't really an explanation, but there was a deterioration of my low lumbar straight through the spine, um, the tailbone, pretty much from like L2 all the way down to like S1. It was no day at the beach. And of course, my doctor prescribed me prednisone. And I'll, I'll be honest, you know, when you're in pain, you get a little bit desperate. And back in the days, back in the days when I did what my doctor told me to do, I started taking prednisone and I kid you not, I gained so much weight. It almost felt like it was overnight. And the reason I know the exact like dates and the weight is because it was right around my birthday. And I remember getting a really cute red shirt and within a week of taking prednisone, I blew up, blew up like a balloon people. It was not pretty. I felt pretty bad. 
you know, who wants to look like that? Who wants to feel like that? Um, so you're hurting all over and you're not looking good, not a good thing. But the end result was I ended up going into the emergency room because I had severe abdominal pain. And so in the emergency room, they ended up admitting me. And the next day I was seen by a gastrointestinal specialist. He did a bunch of GI testing, including a endoscopy. And he said to me, do not take prednisone or any of those epidurals. Do not take any of the steroid injections. He said, oh, they are wrecking havoc in your body, especially your GI system. And so I knew to just never again do steroids and never again do anything, no prednisone, none of it. So I stopped and that was the end of it. But you know, this video is for good reason and that's because I see all over social media on Twitter and on Facebook, all these friends of mine talking about their aching backs, their aching neck, their discs, their inflammation, their autoimmune disorders, their arthritis, and what have you. You know, it's one thing after another and it can even be something as um, minor as poison ivy could end up landing someone in a doctor's office in which he prescribes prednisone. And so while I do understand the seriousness of pain, I'm no stranger to pain. Come on, people, 30 plus years, I could tell you stories about not being able to get out of my bed, being disabled, ended up on disability. Um, it's just pretty devastating when this is how your life turns out. But what I've learned over the past seven and eight years is that there are other answers. But before we get to the real solutions for real pain, let's talk a little bit more about prednisone. Alrighty, so why are people prescribed prednisone or steroids or epidural injections? Some people are dealing with cluster headaches, backaches, herniated discs, Crohn's disease, fibromyalgia, autoimmune disorders, severe skin conditions, including eczema, inflammatory bowel disease, leukemia, MS, rheumatoid arthritis, and the list continues because it's, it, there's always a reason. I tell you what, there's always a reason for your doctor to prescribe you prednisone, but beware, it's poison. Next, let's talk about potential side effects of prednisone. Of course, keep in mind steroids in general can have these side effects too. Osteosporosis, magnesium deficiency, weakened immune system, respiratory distress, you cannot breathe, muscle weakness, weight gain, yeah, your face and your tummy blow up, increased appetite, candida of the gut, beware of leaky gut, that could end up turning into something pretty serious, people. Problems with your blood sugar, which can turn into diabetes, abdominal pain, mental confusion, constipation, risk of getting, yeah, risk of getting diabetes, which I just said that. This is interesting. Ciprotendinitis, insomnia, nausea, thinning of your skin, acne, restlessness, vomiting, an overactive bladder, and then the list continues. Let's talk about serious side effects. If you didn't think that was bad, it gets a little bit worse. Hmm, you may have severe allergic reactions, like the whole anaphylactic shock, um, go to the ER immediately. It is definitely an emergency. You could have a change in your emotions and your moods and have worse depression. You could have changes in your vision. You might not be able to see. You could have eye pain. You could have fever and chills, a cough, a sore throat, Let's see, it says trouble or pain and passing urine. That really sucks. Uh, you know, let's call it for what it is. These symptoms suck, people. Pre um, prednisone is just a very toxic drug that comes with a long list of severe and negative side effects. If you wanna go into the details of psychiatric side effects, this is where it gets even more interesting. So the prednisone side effects that can impact your mental health include hypomania, mania, depression, hallucinations, increased anxiety, psychosis, suicidal thoughts, memory impairment, 
irritability, distractibility, agitation, and delusions. All right, people, I really think this should make you kind of question the next time your doctor hands you a script of prednisone or any of these steroids. You might want to do a little more research. Okay, hang on, I'm getting my other notes. The Food and Drug Administration has just issued what's called a med watch concerning that epidural steroid injections for the back and neck can be extremely dangerous. The alert says, quote unquote, injection of corticosteroids into the epidural space of the spine may result in rare but serious adverse events, including loss of vision, stroke, paralysis, and death. Hmm, something to think about, people. Next, do we want real solutions? Because we're real people. We have real pain. Life goes on. We have injuries. We have accidents. We have neck pain, back pain, autoimmune conditions. We have skin conditions. People do end up with poison ivy, poison oak. I mean, the list goes on for the reasons why we need an anti-inflammatory and a pain reliever. But now we're going to talk about real solutions. So, what I've learned through my rock bottom with all these medications is that we can take back control very gently, very naturally, and a safer method. So for one, we can look into herbal medicine, things like turmeric, that and ginger work wonders for reducing inflammation naturally. Next, let's talk about full spectrum CBD. The wonderful thing about full spectrum CBD is that it works. I mean, hey, I don't have to take medicine. I've been off of all pharmaceuticals for over seven and a half years, and it is the most glorious empowering experience because we get our lives back. We regain our body and our mind and our independence. And so full spectrum CBD can be wonderful because it is plant-based and that it comes from the hemp plant. It's rich in omega-3 and omega-6. And here are some of the benefits. So it's a natural anti-inflammatory, natural anti-spasmodic, natural antioxidant, anti-anxiety, antidepressant, antibacterial, antiviral, anti-seizure, anti-tumor. I mean, I could go on and on. It is amazing that CBD, both oral, so we place it under our tongue two to three times a day, and it's really based on you and your body. Keep in mind, everybody will metabolize CBD differently. Everybody will respond differently because just like with medicine, just like with multivitamins, we respond differently because we are unique. Everyone has a different medical background, history and sensitivities and so forth. But for me, I'm really enjoying CBD. I've been on a wonderful CBD journey for two years and it's definitely transforming me and my health. Um, I definitely can say I like using CBD oil both orally and also directly onto the aching back, aching muscles, aching fibromyalgia places. You know, there's a lot of trigger spots for fibromyalgia. And what I do is I open up the bottle and I literally take drops, five to six drops, place it on my hand and massage directly onto the areas that hurt, especially the low lumbar spine area my neck and my shoulders is another one and it is wonderful and so it's as needed i mean right now I'm, I'm using it usually twice a day but i always keep in mind that because of weather changes if it's too damp if it's too rainy if it's too humid and you know every season changes and certain seasons kind of increase the pain and i know a lot of people talk about this with arthritis and back problems and back injuries and neck injuries. We know that weather can have a big bearing on us, but we could take back control naturally and CBD is working wonders. You could check it out. I'll leave my website. If you have questions, feel free to ask and go to DanaOrCurie.com. Bye-bye.